Now, I will tell you, I had fully intended on watching WWE TLC, if not live, at least after the fact, on the WWE Network. So they're digesting what happened on the show and ultimately coming on here and recording a review of it, probably crapping on it, but nonetheless, that was the plan. But a funny thing happened along the way. I think it was last Tuesday or so, I finally sat down and decided I'm going to watch TLC. And as I'm sitting there watching the show, I'm watching, I'm waiting, I'm wanting, I'm hoping for something interesting to happen. And really, frankly, it just didn't. And I got to the point where it was right before the main event, Dean Ambrose versus AJ Styles. And I said, you know what? I'm good. And I did something I haven't done in God knows how long. I didn't finish a WWE pay-per-view. I do stout on it. And I don't feel bad about that. I don't regret it. Because I can tell you right now, as I was sitting there watching that show, it, it really dawned on me that I'm in a position now where I've never enjoyed professional wrestling less than I do right now. That I've never cared less about professional wrestling, I don't believe, than I do right now. And overall, I've never watched less professional wrestling than I watch right now. For the most part, the reason you don't see like Raw reviews or SmackDown reviews and TNA reviews, things like that anymore, is because I just don't watch the shows. Now, maybe some of that could be attributed to football season. Some of that could be attributed to any number of things. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm just not watching. I'll catch up on some of the clips on YouTube, but I just am not watching the shows. And I don't really feel like I'm missing a whole lot. And I was just sitting there as I was watching TLC and watching how the show progressed and watching some of the performers. I was just asking myself over and over again, how the hell did this happen? How did wrestling get so damn lame? I mean, seriously. This shit is the lamest that I ever remember it. And that even includes bad years like 1993. I think this is lamer than 93 could ever imagine to be. And it's just, why? How did it get to this point where wrestling is so damn lame to me? Now, maybe just me personally. I don't watch wrestling with friends anymore. And I've always felt wrestling is the form of entertainment, above all else, that you need to watch with others. It's best with an audience. It's best in a group whether that's going live and watching it or watching it with a bunch of people. You know, there's something to that. And now moving out here to Virginia, I don't have anybody that I watch the shows out here with. I don't watch it with the guys back in Iowa. I just don't have anybody to watch wrestling with anymore. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's just a changing in life priorities. Now I'm in my mid-30s. I've got a lady. You know, we live together out here. Um, you know, I'm focused on my career. You got the dogs, got the cats, got all that stuff. You know, maybe it's just a change in me. And, you know, maybe more so it's just me simply outgrowing it. After three decades of being a wrestling fan, maybe I just feel like I'm at a point in my life where I'm ready to move on. And I just don't feel it connects with me anymore. And it's just not something that interests me anymore. And maybe some or all of that is true. And maybe some of it's just been slowly bubbling under the surface for years and it's a it's a wide array of things that have led to this point you know I'll, I'll speak primarily first from a wwe standpoint because that's what got me into the professional wrestling game and being interested in wrestling and loving professional wrestling was the wwf of the mid 80s you know sure i watched the awa i would watch crockett and so on but it was the wwf i've always been a wwf guy but you know i think back over the years you know, when WCW and ECW died, a slow, a small piece of my love of wrestling probably did too, because it was at that moment in time that I realized the business would never ever be the same again, and not necessarily in a good way. Um, but as bad as that was, and it was really bad, for me, I look back to 2002 
when the whole shit with the World Wildlife Foundation finally went down, and the WWE decided to get the F out. You know, and I leave it look back now, and I said it back in 2002, and I still stand by it now. In a lot of ways, when the WWE got the F out of their name, the fun went with it. And I truly believe that. And I think, if you think about it, you can point to the timeline, and a lot of you might agree with that assessment. Then on top of that, a lot of the legends that I grew up with, the icons that I grew up with, they were retired, and frankly, they weren't replaced. You know, so that most certainly didn't help. You know, over the years, I've went from watching Hogan and Andre and Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior and Jake the Snake and Ric Flair and Sting, the Road Warriors, the British Bulldogs, and so many others. You know, singles wrestlers, tag team wrestlers, what have you, to the bigger names now are people like uh, Flabby McTubby Tits, Kevin Owens, and Zami Zayn, and we've got tag team champions dreads dancing around with flamboyant unicorn penises on their heads. And, you know, you got guys like Roman Reigns getting pushed on your freaking throats. And it's just, my God, it's striking. You know, the, those legends are gone. The Austins, the Rocks, they are no longer, for the most part. And they were never replaced. You know, and I think back to the WWE, the reign of God. Once Austin and Rock were gone full-time, 2002-2003, you constantly had God pounded down your fucking throat. And then if that wasn't bad enough, you pile on almost a decade of Cena and Orton being pounded down your fucking throat and up your ass. That'll be enough to take a lot of the love of the business away and make this shit seem lame as hell. Because when those guys were at the top, it was pretty damn lame. Maybe it was the shift to the PG rating and the realization that the WWE wasn't trying to target me anymore. The WWE didn't really care about me anymore. Maybe it was looking at the fundamental shift in the approach and the philosophy of the product, taking something which naturally is not PG and trying to fit it into a PG box. Maybe that was the problem. You know, I think part of it, too, frankly, is over the years as a wrestling fan, there have been so many wrestlers that have died and died young. You know, there's almost a bit of, like, wrestling guilt to me. And I don't want to get as invested in some of these guys. Because I'm afraid they're just going to end up dead any fucking ways. Sounds savage to say, but it's fucking true. I think a big part of it, why this stuff maybe has gotten so lame, it's been building up for years too, is as somebody, when you get smart enough to the business, you start to focus too much on the booking and the writing and the backstage politics and the bullshit. And you, know, you, start, you start to look at it in a certain way from a certain color of lens. And you know, I, I'm sure that's done a lot to ruin wrestling for me and I'm sure I'm not the only one you know and even outside of WW when you look at the alternatives for so long I've been looking for a viable realistic pleasant alternative and there's not one out there for me you know no offense to Lucha Underground but I love the fact that they try to do something different in the way that they present it but ultimately once it gets down to the ring I'm not for the Lucha fucking choreographed bullshit. It's just not my style. I choose not to shit on the product because I respect the company for their attempt to try and be seismically different in professional wrestling, but it's still ultimately not my flavor. I just choose not to crap on it because I know plenty of you do enjoy it and I understand why you enjoy it and I applaud you for finding something in professional wrestling that you enjoy. But ROH, that kung fu MMA crap where there's no selling and there's even fewer characters, give me a fucking break. They still look like their shows are being taped in poorly lit bingo halls because in a lot of ways they probably still are. I mean, who the fuck watches ROH and thinks that shit is interesting or compelling? Child, please. And then I think of TNA who in a lot of ways I hope for so long was going to be that counterculture to WWE, was going to be that savior for me. But over so many years, it was just nothing more than the Jeff Jarrett fucking show. And they missed opportunity after opportunity. They were given chance after chance. And now you've gotten to the point where you wonder, will that company even survive? So if I think there's a chance that that company might not be around much longer and they've done so much stupid shit over the years, why the hell would I continue to watch them? 
which is funny because I look at their roster of people sometimes, and I think they have more actual professional wrestlers than WWE does. But at the end of the day, TNA has done so much to scare me away, I don't see why I would ever come back to it. And I haven't been given a good reason for it. And for any of you that are going to talk about Broken Matt Hardy in the fucking comments, you've been deleted! Make my hand. Oh, good Christ. I don't know, man. Why this shit got so lame? How it got so lame? Maybe it's just in general, when you look at the business today, it's a de-emphasis of characters. I mean, a strong de-emphasis on uh, creating unique, interesting characters. You especially see this in the WWE, where they really, truly have made their product a mirror of their corporate reality, where everything's vanilla, we try to make everything the same, we don't rock the boat, we don't take a bunch of chances, and we don't want to make anybody bigger than the machine. We like to have certain guys that could be props that we can use as tools to make a certain amount of money, but we're not really trying to go out and do anything incredibly crazy to make huge megastars because we're afraid once we make them huge megastars, they'll go off and do other things, and then we don't as a company get a return on the investment. I understand that philosophy. I get it, especially when you realize where the WWE is coming from on it, but that's not a way to run a wrestling company. And no matter how much they try to be a sports entertainment company, they're still fundamentally a wrestling company because most everything that they do that is not directly tied to the wrestling product is and ultimately ends up a fucking failure. There has been a huge de-emphasis on quality storytelling. What I don't understand is you bring in, especially in the WWE, you bring in all these script writers from Hollywood and they can't write their way out of a paper fucking bag. And it has nothing to do just with the fact that it's wrestling. They just can't write. And you can blame Vince all you want and Triple H all you want, but if the ideas that they're given are all shit and the fundamental structure they're given is all shit, then you can't expect the end result to get a whole lot better once it gets to Hunter and Vince's eyes. And even in general, just throughout the business, the overall lack of storytelling is striking and it's ridiculous. Wrestling, as much as anything else, is a soap opera. At the end of the day, it really truly is. It's a morality play. It's about telling stories. And the business just doesn't tell enough good, interesting stories anymore. Then, in the past few years, you've really seen a hardcore hijacking of the business where fans feel ridiculously empowered that they want to do it a certain way, and then what happens is, because they're fucking morons, they want things a certain way. Sometimes the companies work her toe to them. Then they don't like it when they fucking get it because they still didn't get it the exact way they fucking wanted it. All the while, the guy that they were trying to really get behind doesn't get over in the right way. The other people don't get over in the right way. And ultimately, nobody gets fucking over to the level they need to get over to actually become big stars and make the shit better. And in particular, this hardcore hijacking of... Even, you see it in the WWE, they're running a glorified indie fed with a big production budget. I mean, it's just match after match that doesn't matter, that has no consequence, that has no purpose, that has no meaning. It, it's just ridiculous. And then, you know, all this emphasis on the flips and the kicks and the brutal shit and the high spots and, you know, the shock value. Now, that's not professional wrestling. And I don't give a fuck how much these hardcore hijacking fucks try to tell you otherwise. You want to sit there and go watch all these flips and kicks? Go watch gymnastics. You want to see a bunch of kicks? Go watch fucking karate. Or even better, go watch ROH and fucking stay there. But even, even in spite of all of that, I can't even blame them. Because it's just, in general, too much lather, rinse, repeat. Like So many of the characters feel the same. So many of the angles feel the same. So many of the matches feel the same in terms of how they're booked, how the finishes are, how the return is booked, everything. It all feels the same. And when you combine that with just how oversaturated the marketplace is with wrestling, you know, from the WWE, all the shit they put out there, then TNA has shit, that ROH has shit, the Lucha Underground has shit, the Independents have shit, New Japan has shit. There's just too much fucking wrestling. And the market does not demand that there's that much wrestling, really, honestly. Even if these companies could technically survive, 
It's just not good enough or interesting enough to justify having this much wrestling. So what happens, instead of more wrestling being a good thing, more wrestling ends up being a bad thing, and I've talked about this before, when you oversaturate the marketplace, as the NFL is finding out this year, with too many Thursday night games, especially when those Thursday night games in large part aren't any damn good, you start driving away some of your audience. You can talk about Kaepernick kneeling for anthem protest and thinking that has that doesn't matter two fucking beans at the end of the day. The reason the NFL was hemorrhaging viewers this year was because there was too much product in the marketplace. On a Sunday, you've got a 9.30 a.m. Eastern London game, then two afternoon games, then a Sunday night game, then you're expecting people to turn around on Monday night, then come back on Thursday and watch another game. And especially if those games aren't good and up to snuff and up to a high standard, people just sit there and say, I, I feel burned out. I feel tired. I'm just not going to watch as much. I got better things to do with my life. And that's where we're at with WWE and wrestling as a whole. There's just too much wrestling, too little quality. You dilute and oversaturate your marketplace and people just start to tune out. And I have, and I know I'm not the only one, in part because of that. But, you know, and on top of all that, the oversaturating and all of this, you know, everything with wrestling just feels like a giant waste of time. You know, because so many of the stories don't matter. They don't get you invested. The characters don't matter. They're not interesting. They don't get you invested in what happens. And the way things are booked out, you know, a guy can sit there and get thrown off of a 10-story building into a flaming bag of dildos, and then they come back on TV the next night, and there's not even a scratch. They don't even bother to put a freaking bandage on them or put some makeup on them to pretend they have a black eye or a hurt sphincter or anything at all. So as an as a, as a individual, as a wrestling fan, but just, just me in general, one thing I don't like to have happen is to have my intelligence insulted. Now, when I watch wrestling now, in a lot of ways, I feel like my intelligence is insulted. And the most valuable commodity we have on this planet, alongside oxygen, is time. We only have a limited amount of time. So we don't want to feel like it's being wasted. And I know I don't like feeling like it's being wasted. And right now I just feel like professional wrestling is wasting my time. So, you know... I just sit there and I look, and I, maybe it's just a combination of all of these things. But wrestling is fucking lame right now. It's the lamest I've ever seen it. And I don't have a lot of hope that it's going to get any better. And I just can't believe it's gotten to this point. It cannot be that hard to do wrestling right. It cannot be that hard to make professional wrestling interesting. But as proven time and time again... For all of the people, all the marks in the professional wrestling business, they find a way to make it all possible. Thanks a lot. Something that I love so much, I now care about so little.